G'day guys, welcome back to G-Man Speaks. Today we're taking a look at a video called Dating in Your 30s is Terrible. This is by a creator called Beatrice Caruso. Original video link in the description. Let's go. Okay, so I have been out here in these streets <laughs> dating what have been presented to me as grown ass men. That is questionable for the past months now. And in the past two weeks, I have decided to expedite the process. Like not text them and get to know them before agreeing to go out, just going out on dates, rapid fire really quickly, making it more quick and painless and more about the social aspect of getting out there, socializing, being less awkward, learning how to meet people. Everything was fine and dandy. I was having fun, I was going on all these dates, but then I was also experiencing a lot of rejection, which is fine because I know I'm not gonna be everyone's cup of tea. My whole strategy for dating is to be as unapologetically myself as I can possibly be. Right? So be an absolute, um, insufferable woman, right? Like that's, when women say, oh, that's just me, or I have a big personality, or I'm insufferably, sorry, um, unapologetically me, it means I'm a C-U-N-T. That's about as far as it goes. So when you guys, when you say that sort of stuff in women's profiles, for some reason, they like to put it, you know, they've got those stupid lists of things. And it's a little emoji for every different one. It's got a little dot point, right? And you read it and they're all just obnoxious as fuck, aren't they? And then you're like, you say something there. If you can't handle a woman with a personality, I'm not for you or something like that. Well, that is her giving you fair warning. Let's talk about, she made a few points, so I want to recap on what she said. Um, so she's a woman, she's 30 years old or early 30s, um, and she's on the dating app. So she said that she was trying to expedite um, the dating process. So trying to, um, you know, fast track, not text guys too much before meeting, etc. That's a very male thing to do. And I think as women get older, they get a bit more desperate and thirsty like younger men traditionally are. And what happens when men generally get into their 30s and beyond, and this is what happened for me, I became a lot more discerning with the women that I would actually go out with. I would reject women. Now, when I was a younger monster hunter, I'll take what I could get. That's just the reality of being a younger man. It's hard to pick up chicks, regardless of how good looking you are. It's a lot harder when you're a young man who hasn't done anything in your life yet. Um, than a man that has proven himself and, um, you know, has a bit going for him. He's ticking a few of the women's checklists, right? Some of the boxes that they have. So this is what is very common. What I saw out there a lot of is these women going on heaps and heaps of dates, even telling you about it, and then not understanding why men are not wanting to go out with them, take them seriously, or want to commit. I don't think they can understand that men don't want to go out with women, who are serial dating, not even serially banging dudes. I'm just talking about women who are going on heaps of dates with guys. It gives off um, a bit of a bad taste. And I think it's, um, even when I was monster hunting guys, it used to put me off. And it, 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 I call this the smell of death. I've talked about it um, in various of my other videos about women sort of dating in their 30s and, and above where they have the high standards. Um, they're hard to deal with, all that sort of stuff. But the smell of death is when a woman, you, you can tell she's desperately running out of time. And she's just focused like a F-18 fighter pilot, you know, with a missile on top gun. Beep, 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 beep. You're the target, right? And it's trying to lock you down because she doesn't want to be on the dating apps anymore. She doesn't want to be 30 and 31, 32. With people asking her, oh, you're a nice girl. You're a pretty girl. Why? Why don't you have a boyfriend? Or why don't you, why do you, why don't you have a husband? Or whatever it is. So it isn't... So much so that they're looking to meet you. They've been waiting to meet you their whole life. They're 32. They haven't met a great guy like you. And you come along. Um, and then it's love at first sight. And it's happily ever after. You're just Mr. Good Enough if you commit a lot of the time. And a lot of guys don't realize that. Or they might realize that after the fact. Right out the gate. So we kind of skip that whole on your best behavior three months dating thing before you actually figure out who someone is. Because I feel like if I'm myself, that lets people be their self right out of the gate. I know who they are and all those red flags come out, honey. And boy, do they come out. <laughs> The only thing that I'm dishonest about is what I do for a living. I don't tell people about the YouTube thing. I don't tell them that I make videos for a living about my life. One, if they found my channel, they would have access to all of this personal information about me because I am 100% myself on this bitch. You know what I mean? So I just think like it would be really easy to like manipulate someone's feelings about you if well, yes, but I think also it wouldn't be that. You wouldn't have guys that are going to watch all of the videos. I haven't watched all their other stuff. 
But you can already see if she like, surely she's hamming it up and this isn't her. She's saying she's a hundred percent or authentic. I don't think what you see. I don't think in this case what you see is is hundred percent what you're going to get. She's acting up for the camera. She's being over a um, overcompensating. You know, expressions, tone of voice. If she's not hamming it up, then I can understand hundred percent why she's not having much luck in dating. But I haven't come across a woman that acts this obnoxious and boisterous uh, in in real life. You had access to like literally everything down to their daddy issues. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, that's not ideal. Also, I did mention, I did social media to a couple of people that I was like talking to for a while just to kind of see what would happen. And one of two things happened. Either they were disgusted by it and thought that I was like really full of myself or narcissistic for posting videos about myself, even though they didn't really know me yet. Or they were super excited about it and were trying to figure out ways that I could use my platform to help them for their own self gain. Mm. So even though I don't want to lie to these people and start a relationship off that way, I feel like it's a good way to protect myself to just not mention it. I justify it. I mean, if they feel a type of way, um, if I do eventually tell them, then you know what I mean? I feel like my reasons are valid. There were very few that were just neutral about Fair the enough. whole social media thing. People feel one way or the other. I think people should keep a lot of stuff to their chest in the early days. You shouldn't just go on your first date and, and saying what you get up to, what your revenue streams are, income sources, all these details about your job and all that. So I didn't entirely disagree with her on that one. I think that's probably fair, fair enough, really. The other about it. It's a thing. But I don't really need to worry about the long term because no one is exactly sticking around. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And maybe it's because I'm using a dating app to try to find people, but the options for meeting someone organically are like few and far between. But 30 is a weird age for dating anyway, because there ain't no one out there that hasn't experienced any kind of like trauma or heartbreak at this point. Yeah. Like I'm fine with people having baggage because it's unavoidable. I got baggage, but I feel like I'm also toting it through the airport myself, you know what I mean? And tagging it, being responsible for it, not leaving it unattended to where people think it's a bomb. I think it's, um, I think it's a really good point she makes because that's exactly why I think women, a lot of women struggle in their thirties. There's probably two things. Being insufferable, um, being annoying, um, but getting away with it because you're cute, you know, like I can think back to when I was younger and I've told stories about my first girlfriend. She was a real smoke show, but, and she treated me like absolute garbage for about three or four years. I put up with so much shit because she was hot. She was smoking hot, young, you know, early twenties when I dumped her. So she was still at an absolute peak, but I put up with so much rubbish because she was attractive when women get a bit older or they put on a bit of weight, they still try to act that way thinking they can get away with that because guys used to fall over themselves to be with them in their past. Even probably girls like this, there would have been guys out there chasing her, wanting to lock her down. And it no longer works because uh, the package isn't so desirable for men to chase. The second thing is, yes, um, I can even talk from my experience. Like I've get, I told you guys all about my monster hunting uh, womanizing days and all of that. And I had two major stints of doing that in my life. There was one pre-marriage and one and one post-marriage. Pre-marriage me still believed a lot of what women said, um, you know, in terms of all the bullshit they come up with dating and all the manipulation and games and all that sort of stuff. I, I believe I used to fall for it and just chase them around like a puppy dog. I wouldn't say I was a simp or anything, but I was thirsty. I was young. I was thirsty. I was, you know, before I was 25 years old, every young guy's out there chasing it like a little Jack Russell, right? Fully admit it. I wasn't, I didn't come out of the box the way I am now. You know, experiences make the man. And exactly to that point, experiences make it the man. So when you say, uh, you get a lot of guys who go back on the dating app. She said there are guys with trauma. Uh, you get guys who might be um, out of long-term relationships. You know, they've been de facto with a woman, um, live with them. You may as well be married if you're doing that. Um, or they were married and they've gone through really painful breakups. They've seen the, you know, what awaits for you um, at the end of that process. I know it's hard for everybody. I'm not saying women don't suffer in bad breakups. They do. But from the man's perspective, uh, a lot of the allure, a lot of the idealizations and romanticisms we have about women, when you live with one, and then when you go through a bad breakup with one and see some of the, the bad things they can get up to or the way they can discard men, those illusions um, really do fade quick and you start being a lot more critical about the women you let into your life. 
let alone date, like, like I would be super critical about a woman I'll go and spend four bucks on for a coffee. Like that would have to be a much better standard than what I was chasing back in the day. So even just for a $4 coffee, let alone dating and having a girlfriend and uh, all those other next steps, it becomes a lot harder for women because men are like, hang on, I really need to vet you out. I need to be very critical, maybe sometimes over the top critical, to make sure that doesn't happen to me again. So that's why I think they suffer and they don't understand this and they say it's emotional, um, emotionally unavailable. When it, whenever I hear a woman say a man's emotionally unavailable, I just say, no, the man's risk averse um, and he's not just laying his heart on the table for the, uh, for a girl who just touches his penis. Like, so I think that's why they struggle. You know, I'll, I'll be fair. I'll be fair to her. Like, it would be. Hard. I would not have wanted to be a woman going out with me, um, dating me, trying to get me to be her boyfriend. It would have been a nightmare. I, I probably created women like this. So I can understand where they come from, where they complain, but they also need to understand how how men get there. Does that make sense? So what I'm looking for is how they handle that baggage. Are they able to self-reflect? Are they emotionally available? Do they have any kind of emotional intelligence? Are they blaming everything on a crazy ex or multiple crazy exes? Red flag run because you are going to be someone that they blame no matter what you do when they jump off to the next. But once you sift through the sea of sad... Once again, just gave dating advice to... Uh, hang on, this has 200,000 views and she's got 358,000 subscribers. <laughs> So it's really incredible the following some of these chicks get um, on social media. So she did say, more or less, uh, her life's a dumpster fire from a dating standpoint. And probably in her broader life, probably a dumpster fire. Sitting in a car at Walmart making uh, dating videos, complaining about men. But to that point, I do agree with her to an extent. I think a lot of people go on these dates, especially when... You get to the like the late twenties to mid thirties, maybe even late thirties, and the first thing either men or women do is start talking about their ex, start talking about the bad divorce they went through or whatever. People don't want to hear that, so I can understand how it is a minefield out there. I don't think it's I think it's everybody's fault. I'm not going to blame women for everything, but I'm trying to explain why men think the way they do um, as a response to this complaining people that are freshly out of long-term relationships, hating women, empty and jaded, or opening a conversation with overtly sexual messages, right? Well, that's the way it goes, muscle hunters do that. But once again, so I know I just stopped it because she said a key point which you hear all the time, if a man criticizes a woman or questions anything, you're a woman hater, you're misogynistic. Uh, I just think it's why you cannot say anything, you cannot question anything, you can't have an opinion on anything in relation to females. The worst thing you can do, guys, I've done this before, I've made a mistake of doing this. Try and be rational in explaining a woman's bad behavior to that actual woman herself. Like you can't do it. You're gonna get this you're gonna get this answer. You're gonna get told that you're a misogynist, you're sexist, you're gonna get blocked, you're gonna get deleted. Especially if they even directly ask you for feedback um, as to why they might not be doing so well on the dating market. You tell them, no 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 get fucked, you're a this and that, boom, blocked and deleted, never hear from them again. But let's, let's be real. If this woman, look, she's looking overweight. I'm sure that is probably, she's like an iceberg. So the iceberg is a thin at the top and she's starting to go like a bowling pin, right? If she lost, she went to the gym, she worked on her appearance um, and lost, who knows, I don't know, fuck, 50 pounds or 25 kilos or whatever. She would probably be really attractive if she'd done herself up. She could still have a lot of options as a woman. But you can't just exist as a, even as a fat chick in your 30s and expect to get a good quality of man to commit. Uh, you're going to get a lot of monster hunters, that's for sure. You're going to get put in the back of the VN behind the cricket pavilion. Absolutely. There's never going to be a shortage of that. She could be 85 years old. Guys are going to want to do it. But when even when a girl is a bit chubby, but she's cute and she's young, uh, a lot of men will still commit to them. A lot of men will still wife them up, no problem. Not even question it. All right? But once they get a bit older, they start that allura, those mind clowning boners, they stop controlling the man's thought process. All right, guys, about halfway through. So if you're enjoying my content um, and this sort of vlog today, um, please subscribe to the channel. Um, aiming for 10K subs, um, so your support is greatly appreciated. And the best way to support me, guys, is just watch and, and, co and comment and interact. Um, that's sort of what YouTube do needs and does uh, promote people based on. 
right out of the kit? Like, sir, no one needs to know about you wanting to lick everyone's butthole. Stop. Does that work? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It does. I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Right it out does. of the gate, just tell someone you want to lick their butthole. There's no way. There's no way in the history of man that that has ever been attractive. There is no way. Unless... Uh, there is, and, and I'm going to tell you exactly why guys do that, because obviously they're not looking at her as any more than a, 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 a root and boot, and one that they don't care um, if, if she rejects them or not. So what I got, I call it the nuclear warhead um, approach um, to monster hunting. I used to do this all the time. I just didn't care. didn't give a stuff. I'll just say the most out there, you know, innuendo comments to women, right? Just straight up, straight up. And a lot of the time, you'd be surprised when you don't care. A lot of them actually go for it. They bite that carrot. So it does work. That's why guys do it. Because they might do it to 10 girls and three might say yes. That's a huge strike rate. Or one might say yes. That's great. So you're like on a site where like that's the goal you know what i mean i just i'm flabbergasted honestly why that's an opener but once you sift through surface level crazy you start dating people that you have actual conversations with you know what i mean that can carry a conversation the bar is low the bar is buried so I'm just gonna tell you about like some of the situations that I've gotten myself into recently. Um, there's certainly not all of them. Been going on a lot of dates recently. Most of them were just like mediocre and then just, I got ghosted afterwards. So that's fine. I'm here for it, honestly. One of the first dates that I went on, we went to a fancy restaurant, like way fancier than who I am as a person. Like girl, I'm like IHOP at 4 a.m. or maybe Olive Garden on a good day fancy. But this place was fancy and expensive. And I was meeting a guy that we will call Kevin because that's his name. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not his name. But I think it's funny when people do that. <laughs> that's not his name though. I swear. <laughs> so Kevin and I, the banter was there. We like talked back and forth. He seemed funny. All of this stuff. And I met him at this swanky restaurant. And it would have probably been a good first date had I not caught him checking out the waitress. <laughs> you know? She if you guys going to do that? Like, guys even sometimes do that subconsciously without even thinking, you know, a certain body part, their ass or boobs or whatever it is, is going to draw your eye as a man. You're not just sitting there going, eh, like a full fucking dirty Steve with your hand in your pocket, just rubbing your schlong through your pants, just staring at the waitress. So that's a lot of, I think that's a bit of insecurity. Like, I'm sure she probably saw a couple of cute guys and eyeballed them as well. It's just the way it goes. That's the reality. People look, doesn't mean you anything wrong with that. Look, but don't touch. Um, especially if you're dating somebody, but I find that stuff to be really laughable. Like that's a red flag. She's already just disqualified the guy on the first date. He's taken her out to a nice place because he, she, she perceived him to be staring at the waitress. Maybe he wasn't. Oh, I've actually been guilty of that being at the gym and stuff like that. I go to the gym a lot, guys. Do a heavy set on on weights, and I'm walking around. You know, you're sort of just chilling. You got your headphones in, and you're sort of staring into space. And you then you realise that the space that you're staring into, it's like a chick. You know, and you're staring right at her on a machine and then they look at you like you're a creep. Happened to me more times than I'd like to imagine. I'm like, oh, no, I didn't. So it happens. Sometimes we are not there. We're staring into space. Listening to your bullshit story going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Looking around the room, you know, pretending like we care when we don't. came and took our drink order and then like as she was walking away i followed his eyes down as he like gave her the once over you know checking out that rump and she was very beautiful i'll give him that but i mean could you at least be like a little bit more sneaky about it fuck like <laughs> i'm meeting you for the first time but that wasn't necessarily like a deal breaker for me because like i was thinking in my head like maybe that wasn't what he was doing it totally was but maybe it wasn't i was still trying to like talk to him and have like this conversation but then he just like starts trauma dumping on me like all of the crazy stuff that he's endured in his childhood and then as a result his adulthood and the arrests that he's had and like all yeah i think if you have all that shit keep it to yourself um, as i said a lot of guys they do do it um you've come out of a bad breakup you're still hurt and you go on a date i've done it i've done it before um and you start fucking telling girls about it they're on dates with they're like they don't want to fucking hear that so i, I I'm, I'm all about this i don't think that's unreasonable of this stuff and like I admit like the stuff that he told me that happened in his childhood that I won't repeat that was a lot like I was like are you okay but I really 
don't know what to do in these types of situations, like what the protocol is, how do you get someone off of this topic once they're starting? So I was just like listening, asking questions about it, telling him I was sorry and like all of this stuff. I don't know what to do in that situation. But That's a fair call, right? But what's the mistake that she's made and how she ended up in this situation is, once again, we go back to the start first comments and she's saying she's fast tracking the process, right? She's not vetting dudes out that she's going on dates, but she's just meeting up with them. So she would have jumped on the phone with this guy and had a five minute chat. She'd probably go on, yeah, nah, save yourself a date, save the guy's time as well. Another thing, and I, I, guys, tell me if you've experienced this in the comments because I've had it heaps of times and I can't, I, 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 I truly can't understand it. Women who won't want to talk on the phone before they meet up with you. For me, um, especially as I got into my 30s, like back in the day, I've told you about my monster hunting stuff. Guys who are new to my channel, check out my video on womanizing. I, I sort of give a high level summary vlog sort of on what I got up to and, and stuff like that over the different stages of my life. But if I was out monster hunting, say pre my pre-25 year, pre-25 years old, all the chick would have to say, I'd say ASL, right, on Merck or MSN or whatever it was. This was before you had picture phones and dating apps and all this shit. If they'd have said, you know, 19, F, female, I'm like, oh, I'm in. You sound hot. I can stop that. Just that. 19, female, and I wouldn't care if it was in Uluru, as I said. I was going. I didn't care. I wasn't questioning it. Didn't even care. Didn't want to, I, didn't really, I didn't even know if she, I didn't even care if she had to exist. Right, I'm being honest about that. I had guys call me, oh, you're a simp, you're a simp. Young guys do this shit. You don't give a stuff. If you get a bit of a sniff, you're going to get a bit of an action. You're just going to, you're going to roll the dice. You're going to roll the, um, you're going to spin that fucking roulette wheel and hopefully it lands on something good when you turn up and then she turns up and you're like, you're just hoping it's half decent. Uh, that's giving me back some memories. But yeah, I think, as I was saying, women not wanting to meet up with you. Oh, sorry, talk with you on the phone prior to a meetup, but are happy to meet a stranger somewhere at night time in the dark or something like that. I find that very, very strange. Like, oh, no, I'm shy. But I'm like, what do you mean you're shy? You're going to be meeting me face to face. Like, we may as well talk. I, I still get that. And I know some people don't like talking on the phone, but I found that strange because you're, okay, you might not talk on the phone and then you might not want to meet them. That's okay. But you want to meet, you, you really want to meet up without really having, hearing me, understanding what I talk like, what my mannerisms are. Are we going to even gel? Because I always found if you spoke to a girl on the phone, for 10 minutes, you can pretty much suss her out. As a seasoned monster hunter, you're going to be able to suss out basically if they're going to be your jam or not, if you want to meet them or not. So women who would not want to meet me, I wouldn't meet them. I, who would want to talk on the phone, I wouldn't meet them because I just found it too risky because they've been catfished a bunch of times. So tell me your experience on that, guys. But he wasn't really asking about me or anything. Um, he was just kind of monologuing. The one thing he did ask about me was about YouTube because he's one of the ones that I told that I make videos. I didn't tell him the channel name or anything, but he asked me how many subscribers I had. And then he asked me what made me so special that people watch me, which I thought was like a little bit backhanded. And I honestly didn't know how to answer it because I don't know. I was just like, I don't know, I'm just normal. And I like vlog my life. Yeah, and I don't think um, that's a really interesting. I've actually had that said to me too. Uh, I'm nowhere near as big as her, but I think it just comes down to people like a certain person's personality um, and make them part of their day. They want to. They want to hear you talk. Um, they resonate with what you talk about. They might have had similar experiences. So yeah, I think some people who don't um, truly understand sort of how the social media aspect works will say, um, "Yeah, we'll make comments like that." But I don't think they mean it in a nasty way. It's just like. They don't understand it. And he... <laughs> and he looked at me like I was the dumbest person on the planet. And then he goes into like this whole monologue about how he hates online dating and like the apps and that like you have to talk for like four days before you meet someone. And we had talked for at that point exactly four days before I met him. So I was like really personally kind of offended. Anyways, and then the bill comes and he sighed and he like looked annoyed or whatever. And like, I always like offer to at least pay half. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to like get anyone to pay for me for anything. That's one of like my insecurities. 
I don't want me to feel like I owe anybody anything. Fucking hate that shit. I don't want anyone to be like, oh, you're taking advantage of me for money. All that stuff. Fucking hate it. So I'm like digging in my purse and like I get out my card. I put my card on the thing. He puts his card on the thing. I'm thinking I'll pay for my meal, my drink, the things that I got and we'll split like the appetizer or whatever and he'll pay for all of his shit. Because mm, let me good. tell you, I got the mushroom risotto and one drink. And we got an appetizer. He got the biggest ribeye. Oh, you know what? This chick's actually sounding pretty reasonable. Um... I'll tell you, so if there's any girls watching and they want to understand why guys don't want to pay for things, even if it's like a $5 coffee, I'll, I'll tell you from someone, um, I'll tell you straight, right? The reason why guys don't want to pay for your date, um, even if it's four bucks or five bucks, whatever the fucking coffee is now, six bucks, which is incredible. I won't get myself started on that rant. It's because at the start of this video, she talked about she's been out dating many, many guys, Right? If I didn't know that she'd been out dating many, many guys and I thought she was maybe doing one at a time, I would have no problem paying for the coffee, right? It's just a, it's more that you know that you're probably not going to see her again or there's a high chance you're going to see her again or she's going to ghost or flake on you. Why would you go and spend six, throw six, six bucks in the bin um, for a result you didn't get or, you know, a, an opportunity for a proper dating experience because these women who multi-date, as you know, guys have got short attention spans. They go on a date with you, and then they've got three other dates lined up that weekend for coffees and uh, lunches and drinks and shit like that, right? So that's why I would would not pay. But I've also been the good little boy back in the early days, back probably in my early twenties. Even when I was monster hunting, I'd still pay for shit because I thought you need to pay, and that would increase your chances to get action. But you sort of realise pretty quick. Um, or we're not pretty quick actually I think it takes some time and some experiences which a lot of guys actually don't learn is that it doesn't matter what how much money you spend on them or where you take them and all that sort of thing if they actually truly like you they're going to sleep with you or they're going to want to see you more you could um, fucking take a McDonald's for a small coke and sit on a park bench or you know, something as unromantic as I could think right if they like you they are going to see you no matter what so, so going out and spending money and putting in all this effort, you know, doing the whole romance thing, it's, it is a waste of time. I, that I have ever seen in my life. Four drinks, and these drinks, mind you, were like $15 a piece. So it was a lot. The waitress comes and he says to split the check. My bill was $100. Sis, I paid $100 for this meal. I bought this man <laughs> two drinks basically and half a steak and provided him with free therapy for what i will give kevin this exactly right for what so you copped it right so she's copped it um she's paid for everything she got nothing out of it she had a shit time so that's why guys don't want to offer up money and take women out for dinner dates because a lot of time they lead nowhere and you end up i've done this and you're driving home you're punching a windy blue on the way home with the window down you're thinking what the fuck did I just get out of spending 200 bucks or 150 bucks or even 100 bucks, whatever it was? You think, what did I get out of that? Um, and you've got a fair chance it's not going to go anywhere more like from that day. So that's why guys don't do it. It happens to you a few times, then you stop fucking paying. So I think it's almost women who are creating that problem for themselves, but also being too open about their dating lives. And now men are more aware of it, especially you got women like blogs. So here got this chick... No shade of it. Actually, I'm not minding this video. I'm not going to rip her apart like I do a lot of these other ones. She's being rather reasonable. But she has a vlog where she talks about dating all these guys. If I knew that I was going on a date with a girl, even if she's just innocently vlogging about her dating life, she's instantly in pump and dump category. You're not spending any money on that. That's just my opinion. Um, you guys put in the comments what you reckon if you're still here this far into the video. This though, he at least walked me to my car at night downtown because there is some people that are sketchy as fuck walking around downtown there. There was a man who was frothing from the mouth, acting like he was on something when we got out of the restaurant. So I was thankful at least. I'm gonna wrap it there because she rants on guys. Um, and I think, um, look, we've gotten, a, we've gotten the picture. We used this video as a platform to have a discussion at some of the challenges of dating for, for both men and women in their thirties. I think a lot of you guys will probably resonate with that. So put your comments um, down for the other guys to read and contribute to. Thanks very much. If you've made it this far, guys, as always, I really appreciate when you guys watch to the end. It's awesome. Thank you if you've done that, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.